Hello, Matthew. Good morning, Father. Why are you sitting here alone? Where is Lucy and George? Lucy is there. And George is over there. What happened? Why aren't you guys playing together? Lucy and George had a fight and they are not talking to each other. <laughs> Is that so? And why did they fight with each other? Mm, we were playing hide and seek and Lucy is saying that George cheated. <laughs> mm, now go and tell them that I want to talk to them. I will tell them father. Lucy, Lucy! Lucy! Go away, Matthew. I don't want to talk to anybody. Lucy, Father John is here and he's calling you. I'm coming. All right, you go ahead. I have to call George also. George, George, Father John is calling you. Huh? Let's go then. Hey there, good morning. Why are you silent? Aren't you going to wish me back? Good morning, Father. Matthew told me that you both had a fight. Is that right? Yes, Father. This George, he... No, don't tell me the reason, Lucy. She's lying, Father. It was she. Stop it, George. Now listen. Whatever the reasons might be, I want you both to forgive each other and say that you were sorry. But father... Lucy... I'm sorry, George. I shouldn't have fought with you. I'm sorry too. You're my best friend, Lucy. And I'll never repeat this. <laughs> See? Wasn't that easy? Thank you, father. Hmm. Now come on. Let's sit here. Today... I'm going to tell you the story of Ruth, a Moabite woman. She was an excellent example of how one should trust God. Her selfless love and total dedication to her mother-in-law is depicted as an example for all generations. Wow! Tell us a story, Father. All right. Now listen carefully. Long time back, in a place called Moab, there lived a woman named Naomi. Her husband had died a long time back and now recently her two sons too died. She was now left with the wives of her sons, Orpha and Ruth. There's no point of sitting here and crying. We can do nothing about it now. Ruth, you must listen to what I'm going to tell you. What is it, mother? My daughters, you're still young. Go back to your people and marry again. You can have children of your own one day. Mother, what are you saying? No, Ruth. Stop. You must do what I say. I'm going back to Bethlehem and you can't come with me. But... Why can't I come to Bethlehem with you? Because you're a Moabite woman and in Israel, you'll always be a foreigner, my dear. Orpha, will you at least listen to me? I will do whatever you wish me to do. Thank you, dear. 
Thank you so much. Now, Ruth, please. Mother, please don't insist. Wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you die, I will die. Your people shall be my people. And your God will be my God. Oh, dear. Ruth refused to part her mother and they both traveled together to Bethlehem. Do you see that mountain, Ruth? <laughs> that one? Yes, that's Nebo. It was from there that Moses viewed Canaan. Nebo? Hmm, poor Moses. Why did you say that, mother? Oh, that. That's because after leading all the Israelites from Egypt, he died there. He died at the threshold of the promised land. The God of Israel is the God of the poor. He will not abandon me. While they were traveling, Naomi narrated the history of Israel to Ruth. And after many days of traveling, they finally reached Naomi's house in Bethlehem. Hey, look! Who are they? Hmm, I think I've seen that face before. Hmm, isn't that Naomi? Yes, it's her. Come on! Naomi! Naomi, it's you! Naomi! You look so different! Yes, it's been so long since you left. Where is Elimelech and your sons? What happened, Naomi? No, don't call me that anymore. Don't call me Naomi. My life has become like this ruined house. I had everything when I left here, but I've come back empty-handed. I'm no more Naomi, the happy one. I'll be called Mara, the sorrowful from now on. Don't worry, Naomi. It'll be all right. <sighs> but the God hasn't abandoned me totally. He has left me with her, the wife of my son. She is a good woman. May God bless you. For many days, their neighbors helped them by giving food to eat. Mother! <laughs> Ruth, what is it? How long are we going to live on this charity? Yes, our neighbors are kind, but we mustn't burden them. Mother, I was thinking. What, dear? I was thinking that I can go and work somewhere. What? Yes, mother. Look, I'm healthy and I can work. But dear, I can't bear that. Listen to me, mother. This is harvest season and I can go into the fields and glean. No, I can't bear to see my daughter glean in a stranger's land. But why should we be ashamed? You have told me that our God is the God of poor. That's right. But they might insult you calling you a foreigner. Mother, don't worry. I shall return by evening. God, father of orphans and protector of widows, please watch over my daughter. And that day, Ruth went to work in the fields. 
she started collecting the leftover ears of corn. It is scorching and I am thirsty. Where can I get some water? The field that Ruth chose to work that day was owned by Boaz, a relative of Naomi. On that day, Boaz came to the field to oversee the reaping. Who is that young woman? Oh her! Do you remember your aunt Naomi? Naomi? Wife of Elimelech? Yes. That young woman is the daughter-in-law of Naomi. She has me permission to glean in your field and I allowed. Hmm, they are poor widows. She hasn't taken any break all day. Hmm. I remember Naomi. She was a good woman and she was tried very hard. What's your name? Ah, uh, me? Yes, you come here. Yes, master. What's your name? My name is Ruth. I am wife of Naomi's son. I know. I am a relative of Naomi. Oh. You don't have to go anywhere else for gleaning. No one will bother you here. You may drink water from my servant's drawer. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. But what have I done to deserve this? You? You left everything and came here with your mother-in-law? Come with me. We'll have something to eat. This. Hmm, this is such delicious bread. Thank you. I'm glad you like it. Can I take this bread to my mother? She will like this very much. Of course you can. Thank you. Boaz liked Ruth very much and he decided to help her. You pull a few ears of corn from the bundle and let them fall down. Let Ruth collect those. You have a good heart, master. Lord God, protector of the weak, wonderful are your ways. Ruth, how was your day? And and how did you get so much grain? Ah, uh, mother, Lord led me into the field of a man called Boaz, a very generous man. Did you, did you say Boaz? <laughs> yes, he told me he was a relative of yours. Yes, he is my nephew, my cousin's son. He was so kind, he gave me a lot of bread and roasted grains too. Thank you God. He also allowed me to glean in his field till the end of the harvest season. That's wonderful. 
Mother, let's give some bread and grains to our neighbor, Lady Maka. Yes, she is a kind woman and she helped us so much. Until the end of harvest season, Ruth gleaned in the fields of Boaz. She gleaned during the day and at night she sewed clothes for the poor. Hmm. Let's go to bed, dear. You've been working all day. You go ahead, mother. I will finish this one and join you. But Ruth, look at you. You look so tired. Don't worry, mother. I will join you. Besides tomorrow, we are having the harvest feast. Boaz has invited me to. Really? You must wear your best clothes and don't forget to put on your ornaments too. <laughs> I will, mother. Now you go ahead and sleep. This is big. Ha ha ha. Huh? This is the biggest harvest we had had in years. God has blessed us. God has been generous to you because you have been generous to poor people. Isn't that? Isn't that Ruth? Ruth? Where? I can't see her. Look at the front. No. I can't. Her? Huh? It is her. She is so beautiful. Yes, I too didn't realize that. Poor woman though. She has a good heart. She works all day and then she sews clothes for the poor. Hmm. I must pay a visit to her mother tomorrow. And the next day, Boaz came to Naomi's house. Good heavens. Boaz, my nephew. Hello, aunt. It's so good to see you. I I I am ashamed to receive you in this poor shack. Oh, aunt. The condition of this house doesn't matter at all as long as you are happy. Happiness? That is not for me. I I lost everything. Everything except this daughter whom Don't worry. I'm here to talk about that daughter. Huh? What about Ruth? I uh, I wanted to talk to you first. Um I like to marry Ruth. But only if you have no objection. Lord, you have heard my prayer. What do you say? Oh, Boaz, we will be honored, but but what? You know, as per our custom, my brother's son is the next of the kin. Your brother's son? Who? Sikri? Hmm, yes. As long as Sikri gives away his right, you cannot marry Ruth. Hmm. I didn't think about that. I'm sorry, Boaz. I want you to marry Ruth. I really do. But Hmm. I have to think about this. Don't worry, aunt. I'll talk to Sikri and figure out a solution. The next day, Boaz gathered Sikri and 10 elders at the city gate. Everyone, the widow of Elimelak is selling a piece of land. Sikri, you are the next of their kin. You are entitled to buy it. Do you want to buy it? Yes, I will buy the land from Elimelak's widow. And as you buy the land, you are bound to marry her daughter-in-law. She is a more abite woman. You must marry her and restore her late husband's name. What? Are you joking? 
Are you saying that I should marry a gentile woman? A foreigner? Yes, that is the law of Israel. If you buy the land, then you will have to marry her. Huh? No. No, I don't want the land. Huh? What? Are you giving up your right? Yes, I am. I don't want to marry a Moabite woman. Then you must swear it. Sekri, you must renounce your right in our custom. Give your shoe to Boaz. All right. Here. I hereby renounce my right to buy Naomi's land. And as a sign, I'm giving my shoes to Boaz. We hereby proclaim Boaz as the legitimate heir of Naomi's property. Boaz's plan worked and Sikri renounced his rights. After a few days, Boaz married Ruth. According to the law of Moses and Israel, I accept you, Ruth, as my wife. I shall be faithful to you until death. May the God of Israel look kindly upon you. May you be honored in Israel through your descendants. Ruth and Boaz had a son and they named him Obed. And Obed's son, Jesse, was the father of King David. That was a great story, father. Yes, father, we loved it. Hmm, now shall I ask you a few questions from the story then? Yes, Father. Why did Naomi and Ruth go back to Bethlehem? Naomi's husband had died a long time ago and she lost her sons too. Naomi and Ruth had no one else in Moab and that's why she left to her hometown. Excellent, George. And was Ruth born in Bethlehem too? No, Father. Ruth was born in Moab and she was a Moabite. Good, Lucy. Now tell me why Naomi changed her name. Naomi meant the happy one. When Naomi lost her husband and her sons, she decided to change her name to Mara, which meant the sorrowful one. Right again, George. Now tell me how Boaz and Naomi were related. Boaz was Naomi's nephew. That was quick, Matthew. Good one. Hmm. Now tell me why Sikri refused to marry Ruth. Sikri did not want to marry a gentile woman widow and that's why he let go of his right for Naomi's land. That's right again. And for the last question, how was King David and Ruth related? Boaz and Ruth had a son named Obed who was the grandfather of King David. That's correct, George. It's time for us to leave. Father, what story are you going to tell us tomorrow? Tomorrow? Hmm. Uh, I'll tell you the story of Samuel tomorrow, my child. Ah, the story of Samuel? Yes, the story of Samuel. We will meet again tomorrow. Goodbye, children. Goodbye, Goodbye Father. Father.